Hello, welcome to the Friday, November 5th, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. And we do have a winner for the October Packet Challenge. Uh, Brad did post the solution. Congratulations uh, to Amir Money for winning uh, the competition. We had plenty of uh, correct answers and just semi-randomly uh, picked one of them as our winner of a Raspberry Pi. This was actually a quite interesting and more evolved challenge than Brad usually publishes. Three infected systems here, all part of an active directory domain and different pieces of malware involved in this infection. So congratulations to everybody who got the right answer. And if you want to check your answer or if you got stuck trying to solve it, then look at Brad's walkthrough for the solution. And then we have an interesting vulnerability in Linux kernels that affects Linux kernels from version 5.10 through 5.15. The vulnerability exists in the Transparent Inner Process Communication Module, or short TIPC. This uh, module is used in clusters uh, to exchange messages and also exchange cryptographic keys to encrypt these messages. Now, first of all, the good news here is that this is nothing that's enabled by default and probably not enabled uh, much at all, but it is potentially exploitable across the network. These messages, they can be sent uh, directly over Ethernet. And then, of course, remote exploitation is limited uh, to the local network, but they can also be encapsulated in UDP, in which case they're typically sent to port 61. 18. So since this affects uh, Linux setups that are configured as a cluster, that's the first thing to check here. Make sure if the TIPC module is actually loaded, it's present in the affected uh, Linux uh, versions, but not necessarily loaded. And the vulnerability is really only exploitable if it's loaded. It's also exploitable locally. That would then be sort of more a local approach escalation of vulnerability and local exploita exploitation is likely simpler than exploiting it across the network. Another step maybe uh, to block inbound communication on port 6118, since that's sort of the main danger for uh, remote exploitation of this vulnerability. So nothing to panic about. Uh, if you're running a cluster, uh, please update. And also probably not a good idea to expose that port to the world in the first place. I didn't see a real exploit for it yet, but the Sentinel Labs blog post has plenty of details that should make it not all that difficult for someone to at least come up with sort of a simple proof of concept exploit. And then we got updates from Cisco that you probably should pay attention to, in particular the updates that affect the policy suite as well as the ONT software for switches of the Catalyst PON series. The problem here is yet again default credentials. Not clear if this is cryptographic keys or actual passwords, but one who has access to these default credentials and they should be pretty easy to get from any existing system would have the ability to execute arbitrary commands remotely and also change configuration details on these Catalyst PON switches. There are also some credential replay vulnerabilities that are being addressed here with the small business series of switches and a denial of service vulnerability in the email security appliance. In the last few years, WebAssembly has become somewhat popular. WebAssembly is bytecode that can be executed in the browser, but also as a standalone application. It's often sort of sold as a higher performance type of JavaScript. But what it really is, as I said, it's bytecode. So it's a compiled software that can be written in a number of languages, including C. And of course, when you're hearing C, you're thinking buffer overflows. 
with C that certainly is a popular vulnerability and compilers for C have often introduced uh, countermeasures to make exploitation of buffer flow more uh, difficult like for example stack canaries that makes of the simple stack based buffer overflow exploits more difficult. Turns out with WebAssembly, we don't have some of these protection mechanisms. And as a result, things like buffer overflows may be exploited. Researchers from the Virtue University in Brussels, Belgium, and the University of Auckland, New Zealand, took a look at this. They compiled 4,469 C programs with known vulnerabilities to WebAssembly and to x86 code. And what they learned is that, well, if they compile it as x86 code, which is sort of the traditional way of compiling C, the software just crashed when they tried to exploit the vulnerability in WebAssembly. They, however, were still able to gain a code execution with essentially the same exploit. So this is something that has to be fixed in respective WebAssembly uh, compilers. Uh, of course, not sure where different compilers are at at this point. Now on the plus side, WebAssembly does isolate the actual binaries from the runtime environment. So there's essentially some sandboxing being done here by default that may limit the impact of the code execution, but still the code execution is certainly possible if you're using a memory unsafe language like C. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday.